We're all doomed. The whole planet and we humans too. Fossil fuels are bad and we need to stop digging stuff out of the ground to burn. But wait a second. All those electric cars and solar panels and wind turbines and biomass and clean technology that we're using to offset our fossil fuel consumption is actually going to make things worse. It's nothing more than industrial capitalism that rapes the planet of her materials and pollutes the world even more. Oh, and environmental organizations like the Sierra Club are two-faced capitalists looking to destroy the planet too. Those are the crazy messages that you might end up coming away with after watching the new highly publicized film from activist and shockumentary maker Michael Moore. That is, if you go in with a completely blank mind and choose to accept the confusing, muddled and often inaccurate narrative it lays out. And we're about to critique the film, which means, under fair use, I can use some of the footage from the film without risk of being attacked for copyright infringement. And yes, this video is less about transportation than usual, but this critique is such a critically important adjacent subject, I feel it's important to make and release my take to the film. Produced by Michael Moore and directed by Moore's longtime collaborator and environmental activist Jeff Gibbs, the film, called Planet of the Humans, was due to be released in cinemas last week to coincide with the 50th Earth Day. Instead, because of COVID-19, they decided to release it online on YouTube for free. At the time of writing this review, the film had received nearly 3.5 million views. And because Moore has become a lauded and a regular go-to guy for many news networks and some talk show hosts to use as a well-known expert on Michigan politics as well as water pollution, he's given countless interviews that have been seen by many millions more. Disturbingly, though, it's already gaining traction among those who have, for years, dismissed renewable energy and clean transportation. Its poorly constructed conceits, while easy to dismiss, are fueling those who've maintained that renewables are no better than fossil fuels and thus we should just continue with using fossil fuels instead. Among an informed audience with the ability to discuss, deconstruct and evaluate the film for what it is, a nihilist, we're effed narrative with inaccurate facts that chooses renewable energy as the target bogeyman and does nothing to accurately focus on the issues of overpopulation, the video serves as a jumping point for deeper discussion and introspection over which energy technologies are better and which ones are not. But among a general population in an age where people are dying because they drank bleach, in order to cure themselves of coronavirus because the President of the United States implied it might be a good idea, this film is extremely dangerous. In fact, I'd agree personally with many environmental groups and commentators in calling for its retraction because of its factual inaccuracies and extremely poor handling of science and data, if nothing else. To deconstruct this film to its fullest extent would take longer than our regular videos, even though this one is going to be a lot longer. In fact, it would probably take longer than the film itself, so I'm not going to deconstruct everything, but I am going to argue just three of the main points of the film, baseball style. Near the start, we see Gibbs attend the launch event of the Chevrolet Volt Range Extended Electric Car. In the film, they call it just an electric car. At that event, Gibbs asks where the power comes from to recharge the car, and after a little to and from between GM personnel, we're told by the local power utility representative that the current energy mix is mainly coal. This sets up the first straw man of the film, the idea that electric cars are mainly powered by coal. Except the footage shared isn't current. It was filmed 10 years ago, when the electrical grid in Michigan was far less clean than it is today. Today, regardless of where you live in the contiguous US, driving an electric car results in a far lower overall carbon footprint than a gasoline vehicle, well to wheel included. And a recent study from Europe, carried out by Exeter, Cambridge and Nijmegen universities released earlier this year, showed that in some European countries, electric vehicles have a 70% lower carbon footprint well-to-wheel than their internal combustion engine counterparts. 
Strike One for more and Gibbs. The film comes back to electric vehicles later on, highlighting the amount of raw materials going into the production of electric vehicles, solar panels and wind turbines. The conceit here is that these raw materials are ripped from the earth, livelihoods are destroyed and that green transportation and energy is anything but. While we have covered some of the issues surrounding ethical, environmentally responsible mining on this channel before, the film takes a broad brush and tars everyone and everything with the worst case possible scenario for mining everything from cobalt and lithium to silicon, aluminium and every other component in modern day electronics. But I'm not going to deal with that one here, so I'm just going to pass on that. Let's go with what I'm going to call the second stripe for Moore and Gibbs, the concept that companies like Tesla and other large firms who pledge to go 100% renewable at their facilities are actually just greenwashing and still pull power from the electrical grid and therefore are bad, bad companies. To prove a point, we see a snippet of Elon Musk giving a press conference alongside the then governor of Nevada announcing the Tesla Gigafactory in Reno Sparks. During the event, Musk said the solar panels, geothermal and other renewables available would be used to power Gigafactory. Gibbs and Moore argue in the film that, that if that were the case, Tesla would not need for Giga Nevada to be connected to the power grid. Later on in the film, the two also highlight Earth Day celebrations with a massive crowd and a massive stage in which solar panels are on display and connected to an electrical system on site, but in which mains power and backup generators are actually powering the majority of the event. The pair essentially imply that the event is not green because it's being powered by off-site generators. Both of these two assertions seem to rely on a lack of understanding on how electrical grids and power works. In the case of Tesla's Gigafactory in Nevada, a grid connection is essential to allow the facility to export excess power to the grid, as well as pull power into the facility when there's not enough power on site. I should also note that I believe Giga Reno hasn't actually been fully completed yet, so we won't know the true energy consumption of the site until it's finished. Net zero has always been Tesla's goal. For the concert venue on Earth Day, I'm guessing carbon offsetting or ensuring an equivalent amount of renewable energy is injected into the grid to compensate for the power consumed from the local grid mix, or in fact the power generated by the generators on site, is probably how these events can claim net zero energy use. And the whole idea of net zero energy use is something that the film glosses over completely. I should also note that the film uses solar efficiency figures from more than a decade ago, just as it uses grid power mixes from a decade ago. That might be good to get anti-green supporters fired up, but it's inaccurate based on modern figures. That's poor journalism and it's poor filmmaking. Strike two. As it continues, the film focuses heavily on biomass, taking a line that seems to suggest biomass is as bad, if not worse for the planet, than the other solutions of energy generation, since it burns trees to generate energy. But again, as it has in other parts of the film, the assertions aren't backed up with hard science and data. Instead, they're dealt with using a metaphorical wave of the arm. While biomass does have its issues, shipping wood around the world to be burnt is just one of them. It's not accurate to portray biomass as being no better than coal. For a start, coal contains carbon that was captured at a point in the past and removed from the air. Burning that carbon, carbon which has stayed underground for millennia, is not the same as a carbon cycle from a growing tree in a managed forest and then burning those trees in a controlled, high efficiency, high tech, low emission biomass plant, since the carbon released from burning biomass is hopefully recaptured by the new managed growth. Burning coal in general doesn't lead to new trees being planted, so the ledger of carbon in the air goes up, not staying reasonably constant as it would with biomass. And while I don't feel biomass is the be-all and end-all of energy because it isn't, I do feel it was given a bad rep in the film, which simply bashes on biofuel as just another villain to be taken down. That's strike three. 
which leaves us where? A film that seems to suggest burning fossil fuels is better than new clean renewable energy. A film which uses old data to back up its claims, but which fails completely to examine the peer-reviewed science that shows quite clearly how much better contemporary renewable energy technology is to fossil fuel industry solutions. It's a film which implies solar panels and wind turbines are expensive and inefficient with limited lifespans, but again uses first generation technologies to exemplify that, not look at low cost current generation technologies with far longer lifespans and dramatically reduced manufacturing carbon footprints thanks to improved materials. And it's a film which, despite claiming to want to save the planet, seems only to rely on mainly middle aged white people for input. There's minimal racial diversity in the, in the video and only a passing attempt at racial diversity in terms of interviewees or experts. Given that the climate crisis that we face will impact those in disadvantaged communities around the world and those communities are often composed of native peoples or people of colour, the video was frankly white. And then there's the conclusion that the planet is doomed and that we're doomed and that green technologies are evil and capitalist green industrialism will only hasten our demise. But there's no alternative given, only an allusion to the real challenge, one of overpopulation. There's absolutely no discussion on the huge swathes of world where the women are denied decent education. Education is categorically shown to positively reduce birth rates since educated women who can make educated choices are less likely to be treated like baby factories. There's zero discussion of healthcare disparities around the world. And there's no discussion of the big, massive elephant in the room for Moore and Gibbs. Two white, middle-aged, middle-class guys living in a country where there are active, concerted efforts being made by other white, middle-aged, middle-class guys to curtail proactive family planning and pro-choice programs, essentially forcing women to have babies. No, instead, Tesla, the electric vehicle world, the solar industry, in fact, the entire green movement is tainted and attacked. If they really wanted to make an impact, this film would have been about equality and education, equal rights and energy production for all, sustainable food programs. No, did I mention the education bit? Yeah, I'm mad. Yes, technology isn't the cure to all evils, but it's certainly not the demon being portrayed here. I'm not going to link to this film because I'm so mad about it, but if you've watched it, I'd love to see your thoughts below. That's it. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.